get into God's Word. That's the priority here is uh, God's Word. And uh, uh, we took a break last week because we had Greg and Robin Hubbard with us. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, and um, we're going to get back to this series on guardrails and guide rails. We got uh, the guardrail back up here. And uh, I'm not going to try to walk it, walk it again. Now, I want you to understand, uh, uh, two weeks ago when I tried to do that, I did practice, right? But I practiced in my sneakers and not in a jacket, and then as soon as I got up there and I realized the shoes I was wearing, it wasn't going to happen. I'm not going to try again, that was, there's no do-overs, but uh, uh, besides, I did that, I can't believe how many people texted Sherry down in Florida uh, to tell her what I was doing, you guys ratted me out, and I, I get a text from here from her saying, what foolish thing am I doing up here, so... Uh, you guys, I, I know nobody has my back. <laughs> anyway, no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, as we're doing guardrails and guide rails here, we've been talking about areas uh, within our life where we, uh, just like out there on the highways and the, uh, the roads, and maybe even noticing where those guardrails and guide rails are at. Again, they're called guide rails now. We, old school was guardrails, and so I'm just using both, both terms, guardrails and guide, guide rails. Uh, but uh, in your sermon notes there in the bulletin, I have kind of uh, the previous parts, one, two, and three, about direct and protect, and why can't we be friends and flee the fire. Uh, I encourage you, if you didn't hear any of those messages, that you go to the website and uh, you can check them out. Also, I was told that the, uh, uh, the Bible services are uh, uh, on there, so at least two of them so far. The other two will be on there, but if you did not get a chance to uh, be here for the Bible services, that you can... Uh, go to the website and, and watch those. Uh, but we've just been talking about this idea of establishing guardrails and guide rails in our personal life. Again, uh, the purpose being so that uh, on the other side of that guardrail is extreme trouble. And, uh, you know, we can maybe hit a guardrail uh, and there'll be some minor damage, but it'll be a lot better than the major damage that can happen on the other side. And so there's areas in our life that can cause a lot of damage if we're uh, not careful. And uh, God in his, uh, uh, his uh, infinite uh, mind and all-knowing uh, mind, he, he's helping us to establish those guardrails to protect us and to direct uh, our path. And uh, uh, again, sometimes when we scrape the guardrail, uh, there's you know, some conflict, there's some injury, but not near as bad as it could be if we you know, completely just you know, uh, went right into the pitfalls that are on the other side of the guardrail. Uh, we talked about relationships, and uh, uh, again, the, the, the main scripture has been from Proverbs chapter 4, uh, but we talked in Proverbs 13, 20, that he who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of the fools will suffer harm. We talked about fleeing the fire. We talked about the, our sexuality and uh, uh, God's purpose and plan for that area of our life and that, uh, again, it, it's, it's, a, it, it, it's a fire that, uh, again, fire can be, uh, be healthy, can be uh, helpful, but also it can burn. And so we want to go according to God's plan and will in regards to that. And so uh, today we're going to uh, talk about uh, consumers, hoarders, and givers. Now, again, don't, uh, uh, don't check out just because of that title. You say, well, what's he going to talk about the... Uh, here we're going to talk about another area of our life. Now again, I've been delving into some personal areas. I understand that. Uh, relationships, sexuality, and today we're going to talk about money and finances and stuff. And uh, again, there's uh, we need to understand, nine, I believe about 90% of our life involves these areas that we've been talking about. Relationships, sexuality, and now finances. And uh, that means 90% of our struggles are going to be in those areas. And so, again, I don't know where you're at, where you might be. And, again, I'm going to delve into uh, some things here. Uh, they're difficult areas to talk about. But we talk about, like I said, all right, because we love you. Uh, I'm going to be sharing today just like uh, I've shared uh, over the years with my, my own family and uh, my, uh, my daughters. And uh, uh, just in, in trying to uh, maybe teach them and, and to show them. Uh, we're going to be looking at biblical principles, uh, and then we're going to be looking at uh, uh, maybe a personal plan and personal application uh, within our lives. So uh, uh, I'm going to you know, 
gonna try to get in here. I lost a few minutes already because of your appreciation, and that means uh, a, a lot. But just give, give me, uh, give me this time. We need to understand God's word. Uh, again, I love how God does things. You know, little things that sometimes you don't even realize in a service. Right? Uh, the scripture that Connie shared. You know, uh, uh, highlighting that. Uh, you know, God's word is perfect. All right, it's flawless. His way for us is perfect. And we need to understand God's word, the Bible, and its principles are exactly what we need. That's why God gave them to us. That's why he inspired uh, the writers of uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament, and, and it has lasted all these years, because it is the truth. Now, I, I you know, we, we need to understand that biblical principles and God's word today in this world, the world dismisses God's word. You know, just, oh, it's just a book, you know, and, and a lot of times they dismiss it because, again, it delves into areas that uh, we don't, we want to take, we want control of it, and we don't want to, uh, uh, we don't want anybody telling us what to do, really. But I, I you know, I guarantee you, if, if an individual, whether they have a faith in God or not, all right, and whether they want to believe in God or not, if they would take the Word of God, the Bible, and they would uh, just give themselves even three months of reading and studying God's Word and applying it, they would have a revolution in their life. Our, our culture, if, if they would just uh, seek God's Word and, and read it, there'd be a cultural revolution. I'm convinced of that because it is true. It is true. Again, they don't have to, you know, they don't even have to believe in God. But if they would just look at that word and, and, and apply it in their lives, their life would change for the better, far better. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to take some biblical principles and then we're going to look at a personal plan, a personal application here. And, and uh, understand this as we go into this, right? And uh, as, as we delve into this, the Lord's chief competition is not Satan. Alright? It, 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 it is not Satan. It is not the, the, the Lord's uh, worst competitor, the chief competitor. It is you and I. You and I. Because we, uh, we want to rule our own life. We want to control our own life. And, you know, the, the devil doesn't have to do anything uh, to cause us to, to do that. He doesn't have to tempt us in any way. We're born that way. But that's how God created us to have that, uh, that choice. And, and, and again, he wants us, he, he wants us to uh, surrender to him and to seek him. And so he gives us that choice. So we're, we're the chief competition uh, for God's will in our life. Well, one verse I want to share with you again. We've been sharing a lot from Proverbs, but Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. What a great proverb this is. Again, the Proverbs, uh, uh, you know, usually have a line A to line B. Uh, line A could be uh, maybe in contrast to line B, uh, something positive, and then line B is uh, the, the opposite, something negative, or, uh, you know, if, if, uh, you know if, 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 you know, it's God's provision for us, and then if we read reject his provision, what could happen. Uh, but line, Proverbs 10, 22 has a line A and a line B, but they, they really go, go, go together and, and they connect together. It says this, the blessing of the Lord brings wealth and he adds no trouble to it. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth and he adds no trouble to it. Now, you think, okay, what's that saying? All right? And we all can, uh, we all can sometime in our life maybe look back at uh, something that, uh, you know, we, we, we've been blessed with, all right? And uh, you know it comes from the Lord because there's absolutely, I mean, there's no strings, there's no, there's no trouble. I think we also can look on the other hand, and there's something that maybe we've pursued on our own, and uh, we've sought it, and we've made it happen, and it's like, oh, this is it, this is it, I find, I, you know, I've cashed in, and then there's nothing but trouble. There's nothing but trouble. Now, this is my personal opinion. You can take it for what it is, but uh, I don't think a winning lottery ticket is a blessing from the Lord. Right. That's just my opinion. I think, uh, I, I've read the stories 
of the big winners. And after that, they got nothing but trouble. Nothing but trouble. Look at that. Uh, that that's, that's just my opinion. But uh, the, what we're saying here, though, is God is saying His blessing will bring all that you need. His blessing will uh, bring everything that, he, he, even that, that is going to be necessary, and there'll be no trouble. And that's why you'll know it's from the Lord. You'll know. If you try to pursue it on your own, you know you're going to find trouble. If you try, if you try to make it happen all by yourself, you may there may be success, but there's going to be a lot of trouble. The perfect example from the Bible uh, is that of, of Jacob. All right, Jacob's life. Uh, the first part of his life, it was all about what he was making for himself. All right? I mean, God wanted the blessing. God, he was going to have the blessing. But through a little help from his mother, he kind of stole the blessing, got it for himself, and he lost his family. He had to run for his life. He had to, uh, he had to just take off. And a lot of people in life have, have had that journey where they, they, they've had to leave things, leave people, because of they went about things. And so again, even as he pursued a wife, as he uh, uh, pursued his wealth, he, he, uh, he burned some bridges and he uh, was in conflict with individuals until he finally, in a, in a, uh, a night, he wrestled with the Lord and, and, and then he finally just surrendered to the Lord. And then from there, the blessing of the Lord uh, was there. So that's just an example. But the blessing of the Lord brings wealth and he adds no trouble to it. And so when we look at finances, when we look at money, when we look at possessions, when we look at stuff, you know, we need to recognize, you know, what's coming from the Lord and what's coming from this world and from our own, own dealings that may not be, uh, you know, completely uh, uh, upright and uh, the way the Lord would have us to go. But uh, we can learn a lot from that. Well, Jesus, of course, taught about money. There's a passage of scripture I want you to see with me, and at the top of that passage, you'll probably see the heading, Jesus is teaching about money. It's found in Matthew chapter 6. It's part of what we call Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And so I want to read this passage from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 34 now. Uh, again, it's roughly about 15, 16 verses there. And so uh, uh, I'm going to ask us, all right, uh, to just kind of get, get the blood flowing again. Why don't you stand with me? Let's stand together. And I want us to read this together, all right? Now I read from the uh, New International Version, the NIV. Uh, that should be what is going to be up on the screen uh, as uh, you, you have there. Or if you take a Bible, one of the Pew Bibles, and find it. But Matthew chapter 6, let's begin at verse 19. Let's read it together, and I want you to pay attention. That's why I'm asking you to read it with me. I want you to pay attention to it. There's a lot in this as Jesus teaches about money. Let's begin. It says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow and is thrown into the fire, Will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? 
So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that it is flawless. Thank you, Lord, that your way is perfect. And I pray now, Lord, that as we delve into the area of our finances, money, things, stuff, possessions, Lord, help us to see where the guardrails and guide rails need to be established in our lives. Lord, we're all different. But Lord, money affects us in different ways. And I pray, Lord, that you would speak to each one through your Holy Spirit into their heart, into their mind. And Lord, they will see where their weakness is. They'll see where their strengths are. And Lord, they will establish what is needed to keep from any harm, any danger, and, and just any tragedy. Lord, I pray now, bless this time as we learn from your teaching. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Keep your Bible open to that passage, okay? We're going to refer uh, back to it, but uh, let's get right into it. Some, I said some biblical principles and then some personal uh, plan and application. First of all, understand these truths about what God desires, right? Number one, God does not want your money. He wants your devotion. And I can say that about the church. Uh, as a pastor, I can say that, you know, I, please, uh, you know me. I do not, I'm not a fundraiser, I am not one that beats the drum uh, about money uh, all, at all. I've been here uh, probably too long, many years, or right, 30 uh, some years, and you, if you have been here, you know, I do not uh, stand up here and beat the drum uh, uh, about uh, you know, tithes and offerings. We have it uh, during, the, during the service always, and, and you know, we, we do it as a, a, a place to worship the Lord, but that's about it. Right? I, I, I'm not a, I'm not, you know, one of these uh, that are up there. I mean, we have a capital campaign going on, but that's that's one of, I think, two that we've had all these years. So I, I, I'm not, uh, I, I don't want, want your money. All right, I, I'm, I'm looking for us to be devoted to the Lord. If God, God does not want your money; He wants your devotion. He says, Jesus said here in His teaching, "You cannot serve two masters. It's either the Lord or stuff." All right. The King James says, "Man," the the, the the NIV says, "Money." I mean, it's just stuff, All right? And, and, and we need to understand, uh, you know, we cannot serve two masters. And my question here, my simple question uh, here is, which of those two loves you? All right? How, how many have money that loves them? How many have stuff that loves them? I mean, do they greet, does it greet you uh, every day, you know, and, uh, and say, oh, man, I, I'm, I'm glad I'm in your pocket. I, uh, I'm glad I'm in your wallet. Um, I'm glad that uh, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Right? If you have that, I mean, I need some of that stuff if that's what you do. But, again, the, the simple understanding here is, you know, you cannot serve two masters. And Jesus said it's either God or stuff. And the way you can really, uh, you know, make that an easy choice, which one loves you? Case closed. Which one loves you? And again, uh, God loves you, and he, he doesn't want your stuff. He doesn't want uh, your, your money. He wants your devotion. And that's verse 24. That's what Jesus uh, specifies there uh, when he says, because you'll either be devoted to one and despise the other. All right? You can't, uh, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a seesaw where you can balance it. You're either going to be devoted to one and completely leave the other out. And God is wanting our devotion. So that's principle number one. Principle number two, God does not need your money. He does not want you to worry. That's what, he doesn't need your money. God does not want or need our money. But he doesn't want us to worry. Three times in this passage, Jesus said specifically, do not worry. Do not worry. And, and, and another time, he says, why do you worry? 
Because he, he doesn't want us to worry. God does not want us to worry. That's all he's concerned about. So it's not, again, it's not, you know, even as I delve into this area, it's not about uh, that, the, you know, uh, God wants or needs your money. It's not even about that the church uh, wants or needs your money. Please, if you're already beginning to say, oh, I, you know, you know, uh, I got to tithe more, I got to, no. It's just to understand uh, that this is an area of our life that affects us every day, and we need to set up guardrails and guardrails. So again, now, you know, Jesus said, your Heavenly Father knows what you need, and so he doesn't want you to worry. Uh, and again, I think a lot of the days of our life, if you really think about it, a lot of the days of our life, we are not sure God knows what we need. But here's the thing we understand. God knows more about what we need what we need than we do. See, we, we, we confuse things. We confuse what we need and what we want. And, and, and we live in a society that tells you that uh, what you want is what you need. And it's not the case. That's false. That's false. There's a lot. You watch the commercials and they'll tell you, this is, you know, it's all about, you know, to, getting you to want something and, and making you feel like it is a necessity. And it is anything but a necessity. And we need to understand, God knows what we need. Jesus tells us. Again, his, his, his word is flawless. God knows what we need, and he will provide what we need. So that's principle number two. Principle number three is this. You do not need God to be your helper. You need him to be your master. Now this is going to be... This is going to be something that you need to really grasp hold of. Because again, we all, that's how we approach God. When we want help, when we want Him as our helper, that's when we seek Him. And even seek Him with all of our heart and our soul and strength. Say, Lord, help me. Help me. Get me out of this. You know, help me. I can't help but imagine how many prayers are made over those lottery tickets and over things like that. Oh, Lord, help me. I'll, 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 I'll do this, I'll do that. And we need to understand, God, here, here it is, all right, this is going to be, this is going to hit you hard. God doesn't want to be plan B. He, he does not want to be your helper. He wants to be your master. And again, but Jesus said, you, can't, uh, you're not, you cannot serve two masters. See, that's what, we, that's what we want to, we want to be our own man. We're our chief competition to God. We want to master our lives, and we want God to help us. And that can't work. That's not going to work. That's not what it's, it's so God, he's wanting our devotion. He doesn't want you to worry, but he wants to be our master. And we need to understand, we need him to be our master. We need to surrender to him every area of our life. And guardrails and guide girls are going to help us uh, to do just that, so that he will be our master. So now again, we, uh, you know, we're looking at these, these are the principles, uh, and uh, uh, I want you to see it this way, all right, just maybe look at it this way. Uh, if God has to compete with other things and stuff for your devotion, there's a domino effect. If God has to compete for your devotion, then you know what, your spouse is also going to have to compete for your devotion. And then the trickle down is your children. Your children are going to have to compete for your devotion because, again, it, 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 if all we're seeking is, it, it, it is for uh, wealth and, and uh, that prosperity, you know, we're going we're, we're to push God aside. We're going to push spouses aside. We're going to push children. We're going to push everybody else aside because that's what we're wanting. So we need to understand. That's how we need to understand this uh, this idea. Okay. Well, here's now. Let's begin to look at the the, the plan, if you will. The, uh, the the the, uh, what, what, the uh, applying this, we need to understand. In this case, there's there's two ditches on either side of our path. All right, I didn't go get another guardrail. All right, this thing's heavy enough. I don't want to have to deal with two of them. All right, uh, but uh, as as we look at stuff, possessions, money in our life, the path that we walk is one that there's two ditches on either side. And we need to recognize, there's, we need to set up these guardrails and these guardrails. 
you know, when, when uh, this past year when uh, my daughter Stephanie and I were uh, walking the Appalachian Trail, there was one stretch as we got to the top of uh, uh, one of the mountains and as we uh, were walking along the top and, and going along, we were on a path where literally on both sides, I mean, if uh, a misstep and, and you, you were going to go a, a long ways no matter on either side. And, and so we, we need, and, and, and on those, uh, on that path, I, we were much, we, we were very careful, right? Again, I, I used two uh, walking, uh, uh, hiking sticks. You know, my daughter, she's uh, more agile than me. She only needs one, you know, but uh, I was even trying, are you sure, you, you know, you're, because again, we had both, both sides, we had to watch where you're going. But we need to stand here. We, we have two, okay, here, here's the two ditches. Uh, these two ditches that need guardrail limitations. Now, that's a key. Limitations concerning your plan for, for money stuff. First of uh, all, the, these two ditches are consuming and hoarding. Consuming and hoarding. That's why I've called this part consumers, hoarders, and givers. So consuming and hoarding. Now, again, don't, uh, you know, don't, don't get lost on this, all right? Uh, let me explain this. Number. Consumers, all right? Consuming is about uh, the buying, the uh, spending, and, uh, and uh, you know, buyers and spenders, and usually that means uh, those, uh, my own word, indebtors. I mean, you're, uh, you end up in debt. You end up in debt, all right? When, uh, when we're consuming, when we're buying, when we're spending, uh, you end up in debt. And that's the one ditch that, uh, you know, uh, again, it's that idea we've got to have it all, you know, and, and, and there needs to be a limit. There needs to be a guardrail uh, so that we don't go too far there. And, and, and end up in debt. Now, hoarders, hoarders are, are, are savers, all right? Uh, they're, they're holders, and uh, it's, it's the idea of what, what, what if I will need this someday? Someday I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna need this. And so uh, we, we hang on to it. And, 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 and think about hoarders, and, and, you know, they're, they're savers, and so uh, we like to give it a godly spin. They say, well, you know, God saved, so I'm just doing a godly thing here. I'm, I'm saving, I'm, I'm saving this. I'm gonna, uh, you know, uh, God's gonna even use it someday, you know? And again, there needs to be limitations. Now again, don't, don't, I don't wanna lose anybody here. You know, there's the limitations. The guardrails, the guide rails are, the limitations so that we don't go headlong into those ditches that are consuming and hoarding. And so we need to understand those ditches, both of them, consuming, spending, buying, uh, hoarding, uh, saving, they're both at the center, at the root, they're, they're, they're self-centered. They're self-centered, concerned about self. And, and uh, you know, it, it, it's the, the, the buyer, uh, the spender is consumed about self right now. I need this. I, I, I want this. I'm going to get it no matter what. All right? And the hoarder is like, well, what about later? I'm going to need this later. If I, if, if, if I, if I don't have it now, I'm going to need it later. And, and so it's, again, the, the, the concerns for self. Now here, here again, the, the, the big indicator what or who is your chief concern? Me or God? Who's the master? Me or God? And Jesus in verse 21, he spells it out very simply with that word treasure. That treasure. Jesus used the word treasure. What is your chief treasure? Who is your chief treasure? It's stuff that you're going to be going into the ditches that you're not sometimes going to even climb out of. So, okay, consuming and hoarding. Uh, everybody got that picture now, right? I haven't lost anybody yet, right? I haven't made anybody mad yet, okay? Again, I'm not calling anybody a consumer or a hoarder or whatever. That, you know, you, 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 uh, you know in your heart who you are, all right? But bottom line is we, there needs to be limitations. There needs to be a, a guide rail and guard rail. And we need to understand when it comes to money, finances, the path can get, you know, pretty tight at times. And so we need the protection of God and the truth of God's word to help us set up those guidelines and guardrails. All right, so here's the plan. Here's what I'm presenting to you. Three simple steps, uh, taking the principles from the Bible, applying it to my own personal experience, and, and even what I've, uh, in 30 years of ministry, what I've encountered uh, with, with many people, uh, you know, talking to them as couples, as individuals. Three simple steps, but they need to be in the proper progression, right? That's this, three simple steps. Give, save, and live. In that progression. Give, save, 
and live. Now, understand this, all right? Just we'll, 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 to, to say, see, there is a place for hoarding, all right? There is a place for saving, all right? And, and there is a place for consuming, living, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, live, you know, what, what you live with, the kind, how you, how, how, uh, how, how you, how, how you live. But the first one is give. And that needs to be the priority, uh, to, to give, save, and live, with give being number one, the priority. Uh, you know, our goal, we need to understand, is to have that freedom to be generous. And see, a big indicator uh, that, that you're, uh, you're, you're not, uh, you don't have a good guide rail or guard rail is that, uh, you know, and people have said this, I, I, I can't afford to give. I, I can't afford to be generous. I don't have anything, I don't have anything to give. There's nothing left to, uh, at the end to, to be able to give. And see that, okay, that, that's not the right path. And, and, and you need to uh, take steps and take the measures to, uh, to fix that. Because you want to give, uh, you want to have the freedom to be generous. And I like this Proverbs 11.24, and I don't have it on the screen, but the, the message uh, Bible, the message paraphrase, I like the way it says, Proverbs 11.24, it says it this way. The world of the generous gets larger and larger, and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. That's a wonderful picture. I mean, it's a true picture. You know, but, uh, when, when, when our goal, when we have the freedom to be generous, I mean, the, the, the path opens up. There's so much that we could be a part of it and, and enjoy. And it gets larger and larger. I think we can all understand that concept of being backed into a corner, all right? And, and, and you know, let's face it, sometimes our, our, our finances, we get backed into a corner, and there's no place to go. And we get smaller and smaller. And so, again, the, the truth of the Bible is, you know, we give. We need, uh, we need to give first, and then we can move to that area of saving, and we can move to that area of living. And so again, the ports is the proper progression and the proper percentages. Guardrails and guide rails help us to get those percentages. I'm not talking about budget and stuff like that. You know, of, of, of what you're in. This is where we're going to get into uh, again, giving, saving, and spending. Uh, you know, giving, saving, and living. Here's the three questions that will help you establish the guardrails and the guide rails that are necessary. All right? And again, I'll Again, I'm not a financial planner as far as Wall Street and investments. I know absolutely nothing about that. But I'll, I'll, the, this is, uh, you, this is uh, my financial plan for you that I know will work. I know will work. And if you want to sit down uh, with me, I'll, I'll help you. I'll help you set up those guardrails and those guide rails. The same guardrails and guide rails that Sherry and I have set up for ourselves. Same ones I, I uh, encouraged my, my children to uh, to pursue, and, and again, uh, I've had people come into my office, and I, I, I've shared with them these guardrails and guide rails, and and, and uh, uh, I said, well, you know, we'll get together next time, and they don't come back because uh, uh, these guardrails and guide rails, uh, they're 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 pretty serious, but they will be successful. All right, uh, just three questions. All right, three questions here, and again, I, I feel they're based on. Biblical principles here, but they are, you know, my personal opinion. Here is the question number one: Where does all your money go? And I, I, that's a question that people, uh, when I was sitting down with them, I don't know where the money goes. Where, where's the money gone? And and uh, there'll be a, a couple in conflict, and then you say, well, you know, where did the money go? What what happened? What happened? And you have to ask yourself, where does all your money go? And here's the here's the guardrail and the guide rail that you need. You need to make a record. An account of every cent. If, 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 you're, if you're having financial difficulty, you need to begin to record where every cent goes. I mean every cent. You say, well, that's excessive. It's a guardrail. And if you're struggling, it's because you don't know where the money goes. So to get to the problem, find out where is the money going? Where is the money going? And there's been times I've sat with individuals. I said, okay, well, you know, let me, let me look at your checkbook. They don't want me to see the checkbook. Because they already know where the money goes. And they already know uh, what they need to do, but they don't want anybody else to get that. We want to master ourselves. We, we want to control ourselves. 
and we don't want anybody telling us what we can spend our money on and what we can't spend our money on. And that's what happens with the, uh, uh, the number of husbands and wives that is uh, the conflict is there. Well, you're not going to tell me where I worked hard for my money. You're not going to tell me where it goes to. It. And then there's that conflict. Where does all your money go? How do you handle cash? Can I tell you? I handle cash terribly. I guarantee you, 99% of the time, I will not have a dollar bill in my wallet. Because if I do, I'll go to McDonald's and get a Mickey D's sweet iced tea. One dollar. <laughs> I love McDonald's sweet iced tea. Everything else there is not good for you, but I love their iced tea. And if there's a dollar in my wallet, I'm going to go through the drive thru I'm the, Sherry knows it. I, 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 I can't carry cash. It'll be gone. It will not last today. You need to know your weaknesses. You need to know your strengths. And so I don't carry cash. I have one credit card. And there's something about that, you know, because you know, I, I, you know, I, I won't use the credit card, but if there's a couple dollars in my pocket, they're gone. But I won't use the credit card needlessly. Right? And so again, that, this, this is me. That's my car girl. That's my guy girl. You know, if it, uh, you know, you need to step. But the bottom line is, where does all your money go? Answer that question. Determine where it goes, and then you can start to eliminate, uh, you know, some of those uh, places where your money's being lost and you don't even know it. You'd be surprised how much money you have if you record where it's going and you start eliminating some of the needless stuff. And so again, you know, again, I can get further into this, you know, about credit cards. And, uh, and so forth, you know, credit cards, they are great if you use them to your advantage. But the bank counts on you not doing that. And I guarantee you, the credit card I have, the bank has never made a, a cent off of me except the percentage they get from the store when I, when I pay for something uh, at that store. They don't get a cent of interest off of me because it is paid every month. And I use it to my advantage because I get rewards, too. They're paying me. <laughs> They're paying me. But so many people, so many people, they got multiple credit cards, and they're maxed out. And again, I'm not pointing any fingers, all right? If you're getting uncomfortable, uh, that, that's not me, all right? That's not me. But again, this is the, where's the money going? You look at that, and you can, you can get started in setting up guardrails and guidelines. Question number two, all right? Bear with me here. What is the first thing you do with your paycheck? All right, I understand. We're in a far different age. Nobody gets a paycheck anymore. It's direct deposit. All right, now some of you that are, you know, older than me in my age, you probably remember when, you know, Thursday and Friday, you got your paycheck. And I can remember hearing coworkers say, you know, they would cash, you know, the company would cash their check out, and the first thing they were at, go and get a beer. That was, I mean, happy hour. That's why it's called happy hour. It's at the end of the day, when everybody got their cash, they can cash their paycheck, and they go to happy hour. But that, that's a question you need to answer. What is the first thing you do with your paycheck? Again, your direct deposit, whatever, what, what, what's the first? There, 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 there's really only two answers here. There's really only, just, just like the you other, know, there's only two masters. There's really only two answers here. You're either paying something or you're giving something. All right? That's, that's simple, simply put, you're either paying something or giving something. All right? And, and, and what, what, you, need to, you need to answer that question. What is the first thing you do with your paycheck? Maybe for, many, for many people, it is paying, it, it's paying that first bill, which is already often late. All right? Again, don't say amen. I mean, yeah, don't, don't, don't give any indicator that that's you. Uh, but for many people, the first thing they do is to pay a bill that is already late. And they're paying a late charge and they're paying an uh, extra, right? And, and so, uh, you know, we're, playing, or, we're paying for that need, pleasure, or pastime. That's the first thing they're doing uh, with uh, uh, their direct deposit or their paycheck. All right, the answer as far as giving the answer as far as giving is the tithe to God. That's what that's the guard the guide really you set up. The first thing, again, gets back to that, those three simple steps. Steps giving, saving, living. 
give it. That needs to be your first step. That needs to be the, the first thing you do uh, with your paycheck. Again, I am not here saying you, know, you got to give uh, to Webster Assembly of God. And you give your tithe uh, to the, the church. And uh, that's the first thing you need to do. You give it to God. And we understand when this is first, when we establish this guardrail, when this is first, the first thing that we do is give to God. You're going to break the power of consuming and you're going to keep it broke in your life. I promise you that. God's word says, says that. That's a biblical principle. That when we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that's what Jesus said there in that teaching. When you seek first God and his kingdom, all these things will be added. And that's the first thing. Uh, so what, what, what's the first thing you do? What's the first thing you do? And, and so, uh, uh, again, it, it prevents being owned what we think we own. It prevents being owned by the things that we think we own when we give to God first. It's giving to his kingdom first, not my kingdom. All right? It's giving to his kingdom first, not my kingdom. And the last question is this. What percentage of your income do you live on? I need to get a drink here. My mouth is going dry. What percentage of your income do you live on? Let me explain this and then we'll bring it to a close here. What percentage of your income do you live on or what percentage of your income do you live off of? For the majority of the population, again, don't give me any hands, for the majority of the population, people live on 110%. Now, that's impossible, right? I hope you caught that. That is impossible. That means you're living off of credit cards. And it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. But the majority of people, they live off of more than they even make. They try to live off. And they, they go again, they just, uh, they, again, but, and they even, get that even 100% doesn't work. You cannot live off of 100% of your income. You can't. Eventually, it's going to catch up. There, need, there needs to be the saving. There needs to be the giving. You cannot just, you cannot just consume your paycheck Every week, it will catch up to you. The guardrail, the guide rail is, the, you know, don't, you, you, you can't do it 100%. You need to establish uh, immediately what you're going to live off of, right? And so we need to, again, the, 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 the good plan is this, 80%. 80% is a good plan because you have 10% giving, that's the tithe. 10% saving, putting it away. All right? It's okay to hoard something, save something, all right? And then you can live off of 80%. That's what, you know, that God, God, God he's, he, he, he's going to bless you. 10, 10, and 80. That's just, the, that's just the basic plan. But we need to understand, you know, the goal should be to strive to live off of less and less. The more you can get that percentage down that you're living off of, the more that you can give and the more that you can save. Understand that God's tithe, when, when the scripture tells about, you know, the ten, that's just the starting point. You know, that shouldn't be the starting point. We shouldn't be having him over, well, is it 10% of the gross or 10% of, you know, that's just a starting point. We, are, we should be striving uh, to, to give more. To give more, and and and, and, when, and I, I think you should I think you should match what you're giving by what you're saving, and then you live off of the rest. Your goal should be every month, every year, that you're living off of less, so that you can be more generous. Uh, you 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 can uh, again the 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 world of the generous generous gets bigger and bigger, it gets larger and larger, and so your goal should be to live off of less.